All right, what's up? It's Wes here. Um, I'm kind of whispering a little bit. The family is in bed right now. It's about midnight. And uh, yeah, <laughs> got a little bit of time to record something. But, you know, I don't want to wake up a two-month-old baby or his mother, for that matter. So, um, yeah, so this is going to be about my thoughts on Art Rage, um, a painting software. Um, you know, I did my whole digital painting 2020 overview video, which has gotten a ton of traction, and I appreciate all of you for checking it out. If you haven't, it's where I review and do my thoughts and workflows on nine different painting softwares, and ArtRage is one of those. But I wanted to do a deeper dive and kind of look at why I really, really enjoy using that program and what I recommend um, it for, what is it great at, what is it maybe not so great at. To kind of you know see if it might be the thing that fits your needs but um on that point i have you know i have a big collection of imagine fx magazines these are the nice clean uh oh uh subscriber um covers where there's no text or anything you just get beautiful work this one's by uh, oliver sin right here but more importantly and this is february 2020 edition more importantly i wanted to do a little call out on the back here um, so as you can see, kind of right down here, Art Rage 6, we're talking about Art Rage today. So I thought it would be kind of fitting to show kind of the advertisement for almost a year, maybe they had, Art Rage had kind of back cover treatment, but primarily there's one picture that I want to talk about, and it's this one right here. Um, I'm actually going to set this magazine down. I'll show you a kind of a nicer version of the of the image to give it the full like deal i'll put it up right there so you can see it that is um by my good online art buddy daniel ibanez mamba bon if you're a, a fan of my kind and style of painting and painting videos he also has a youtube channel he uh is incredible incredible he's a traditional painter a traditional paint instructor he works with students from all ages i believe um, and he's done it professionally for decades, and he is a whiz at Art Rage. I've never seen anything like it. In fact, and we'll talk about it during the time lapse, I use his toolbox that I got from his Patreon. I'm a patron of his, so he puts up tools and stuff. I wanted to give him a shout out because I messaged him whenever I made the leap. Um, yeah, this one right here. Whenever I made the leap. Uh, the full-time artist and if you want to hear how that story went i have my advice after being a professional for one year i talk about where i came from why i made the decision to be a pro artist all that stuff um i mentioned that when i saw this advertisement right here and i saw his painting so this is daniel ibanez's painting right here something clicked because I saw the thick brushwork and I saw the impasto and I saw kind of that impressionistic, but still stylized science fiction. And that's like me all over, you know what I'm saying? So I saw that and I was like, oh, something exists that can do the type of art I want to do. And this is part of the reason, as silly as it is, just seeing the advertisement like this on the back, I was like, I can do this professionally. I can I can paint professionally because there's software out there now that allows me to paint in the way that I want to paint. And I messaged Daniel what whenever I, you know, I did Instagram and all that stuff and I sent him a message. I was like, "Hey brother, this might sound really weird, um but I changed my career path based on one of your paintings on the back of an Imagine FX magazine." And his response was great. He was super, you know, humble and he's a great guy. But he was like, I didn't know I had a painting on the back of Imagine FX magazine. <laughs> so um, I, you know, I, you know, called him out. I was like, hey, man, like, check it out, brother. Like, you've been on there for like a year, man. You've been on every issue of Imagine FX magazine. But uh, but I wanted to give him a shout out real quick. And we're going to be talking about Art Rage. He's one of the primary Art Rage artists that I think of that really knows how to use that program to the best of its ability. Uh, but without further ado, we're doing a Mass Effect fan art. Um, I like doing portraits, but I was speaking with some art directors over the past few weeks, and one of the things they said is they would like to see more creature work in my stuff. Instead of people, they were like, what if you use that portrait skill set, 
but actually did some some creatures. And of course, this a Turian, um, you know, Garrus is a Turian um, in Mass Effect War. We could talk about Mass Effect War all day, by the way. I'm a huge nerd, you have to remember. Um, but, you know, a Turian, it, it's a cool looking alien species. It has, the, I mean, eye sockets in the same place, a mouth, like, the, all the features are kind of there, very humanistic in the way that they're maybe put together but still allows for some um, fun stuff. And then uh, putting power armor and all that type of things on them. So uh, yeah, we're going to be doing that and just talking about Art Rage, man, but I am excited. A big toast to Daniel Ibanez, Mambo Bon. I'm going to leave all of his links in the description, but go check him out. The dude is a wizard. Uh, but without further ado, let's take a look at what my thoughts are on Art Rage 6. All right, here we are. So we're starting the full time lapse. Um, yeah, really, I found some references here for Turians um, of the Turian race uh, for Mass Effect stuff. And I just had it in pure ref, which I highly recommend getting if you haven't gotten it already. It's a great way that if you see photos or references you see online and you want to keep them, you can actually just drag them from a website and put them in a pure ref document and kind of keep them there. Uh, you can have settings to where it always stays on top um, of no matter what software you have like in the background, it always works as kind of a thumbtacked um, reference panel, which is pretty cool. But um, I have a three monitor setup. So what I wanted to do here is just show you Kind of, okay, yeah, I have my references here. And then I just drug them over to the other monitor. Um, that way um, I could kind of work from imagination, but maybe make a mishmash hybrid of like three or four of these Turians just to get an understanding of the structure of the face and the eyes and the way they work and the angles and stuff like that. So you're going to see me do some very sloppy sketching here. Um, <laughs> I, I think, you know... I. Just as far as a process thing, I've talked about my struggles with drawing in the past where I'm not a very good draftsman. I can paint okay, but, I, you know, just drawing for whatever reason eludes me. I, I either think I spend too much time on it or not enough time on it, or I need to really get good and technical on it in order to be any good at drawing or all this other stuff. But I think what I'm starting to realize is the quicker I get to painting, the happier I feel about the end result. Because I think if I'm sketching, I'm trying to solve too many problems. I'm trying to, to do the perspectives and the lines and the, oh, well, what's the weight and where's the detail coming from and what does the eye look like and what's the overall shape of the, you know, and you can do that stuff, but I, I don't know, that's too deep in the weeds for the first part, I guess. I, I don't think there's enough information. And I, I'm a type of artist that I like to put random stuff down on the canvas and then see what it might look like and then work from there. So a lot of times I'll have reference open and then just kind of get the overall basic shapes in, then put in some thicker paint and start seeing what I see, if that makes sense. So. So yeah, uh, overall, that way is the way I also work in traditional painting, which is where Art Rage really excels, is emulating that type of workflow. And I will say, well, first off, right here and now, Art Rage has the best palette knife in digital painting. There is no, there is no other software that comes close. Um, Rebel 4 doesn't come close. Um, Painter doesn't come close. Photoshop. The closest thing I can get to the palette knife of Art Rage is actually in Photoshop, and that's using a flat chalk brush on a, like a very wet mixer brush mode. And then maybe, but it really depends on the texture. But there's something about the way Art Rage works. It feels like a, it really feels like a canvas, and I know that's a kind of a tropey, trite thing to say. But even the sketches, I love sketching in Art Rage because it feels like graphite on like Bristol paper. 
You know what I mean? Like, it, it genuinely does that thing to where some of the powder from the graphite goes a little further than what your, um, maybe mark does. I don't know. There's either a way it smooths the corners around your brush or something. I don't know what it does, but it feels legit. It feels like I have a mechanical pencil. I'm doing an under sketch for like a watercolor painting. It feels exactly the same. It's mind blowing. Like I, I, I do think I enjoy drawing in Art Rage more than drawing in any other um, software. Clip Studio comes close. Clip Studio has a really good pencil and pen stuff as well. But Art Rage it just works. It, I'm not so worried about the tool. I just get the thing and I do a sketch and then I'm done. You know what I mean? Like which is kind of where I like to be. But I, I would say the same thing for the oil paints. So as you'll see, I have a, a toolbox. It's a list of tools, basically pre-made. Um, they're all custom brushes, but it's a library of custom brushes. And that's the closest I could find to, to having a setup like Photoshop to where you like load in a brush pack and now all of your brushes are in this one list. Like the toolbox does that really well for me. And this toolbox actually has a vast majority of this stuff from Daniel Ibanez, from Mambo Bon himself. And this was from his Patreon, and I use these every time I load up Art Rage. They feel exactly like what they say. Like the Filbert bristle brush feels just like a Filbert bristle. It's amazing. And I did some modifications of some stuff, so all of those will have Wes next to it, like Wes, uh, softer oil, Wes custom, Wes, uh, I think like thick paint or something. So what I did is I, I just made some tweaks and adjustments to either the standard brushes or Daniel's brushes and kind of found something that worked really well for me. And I wanted to approach this one in a very blocky, angular style. And I really am starting to like that more and more. Because, as we all know, as artists, it's, it's super tough to get the energy of your sketch into a painting. But what I found is if I work with triangles, if I work with, like, basically X's, if I just do a, you know, a stroke from the upper left to the lower right and then kind of exit out the other way and then do that, like, that has some spontaneity and some variety to it. And I think that works really well with these brushes. And my goal is to have something that's really vibrant to look at because you're always noticing something brush-wise. Like, I love brushwork. You can have the most boring painting in the world, but if your brushwork's good, I'm in. Like, I'm totally enthralled. And I think that's what our rage excels at. And I... I oh, excuse me. Got my drink here. Let me probably take a drink of that, man. Um, I will say that Art Rage, um, so for those that don't know, if you go to ArtRage.com, there's two different versions you can get if you're doing the desktop painting. And the primary one is normally about $80 or so. And uh, I think right now I see it on sale for about $47 or $48. They're doing a holiday sale for 40% off. And then there's a Art Rage Lite. And that one's $30. And I would say... Art Rage Lite is fine, and I'm pretty sure if you get that, then you get like an upgrade discount if you want to upgrade to the big one later. I would say just save up for the main Art Rage. If you're if you're interested in it, if you're looking for it, go with kind of the more expensive one because you're going to be happier in the long run. Um, it has more features. It has, in my opinion, a better variety of built-in brushes. But it also has the brush designer, which is where you can customize. You can import brushes. You can um, do some tweaks to brush heads and impasto depth. Like, you can really get into the nitty gritty on that stuff. And it, that's the where this program really shines, I think. is It sounds really weird, but the tools are very basic. But it's so deep. It's just like real paint. I mean, it's just real paint on like, oh, you're either an acrylic painter or an oil painter or gouache or, you know, watercolor. But then once you realize that, you realize, okay, 
So what brand do I use? Like what what type of brush head? What should it be like? Um, like boar bristle hair, like boar hair bristles, and you know what I mean. Like you start getting into the nitty gritty of the detail of very specific techniques and methods to use, and I think that's what Art Rage does well. The tools themselves are pretty basic. You have an oil brush, you have like a little paint tube brush, you have a palette knife, you have maybe some watercolor stuff, um, and then some like kind of gimmicky special effects that I don't use very much. Um, I hate to call them that, but a lot of people will look at Art Rage and think, oh, this is like a gimmicky sort of, oh, look at that. It has a weird shine effect on the paint to make it try to look like real paint. Isn't that sweet? But I would say really give it a shot because if, if you're familiar with painting, if you're familiar with actually loading oil paint onto a palette, that you're holding and then using medium to mix it and then putting it on a canvas and the way that the tooth of the canvas really gets that texture in there so like the difference between a wet brush and a dry brush is huge and i think the only thing that comes close is rebel 4 but even so i will specifically and i've done this before i did this on uh the warhammer stuff i also did it during the adidas stuff if I needed a very specific brush effect, um, I would save out a merged copy of what I had, let's say in a Photoshop or Affinity Photo or Clip Studio or whatever. I would load that merged copy into Art Rage, do the palette knife or do that thick oil brush or something, and then maybe smudge it and do something in Art Rage, then re-export it, and then continue working in like Clip Studio. <laughs> I mean, I, I, I literally think that Art Rage, for what it's really good at, it is the best at it. And that is having that effect of a true dagger brush or palette knife or filbert hitting a canvas and like smearing the paint across the bristles. Like, I, there's nothing like it. It's really cool. Um, but that's not for everybody. I will say if you're interested in something like photo bashing or concept art or something, I think you're going to fight with Art Rage more than you're going to uh, enjoy the process. Because in my opinion, like it, you'll see, I don't know if it's happened yet on the time lapse or not, but what I want to do is I want to resize something. It takes me forever to remember how to free transform something. I had to click through like three different menus and I was like, wait, where is it at? Wait, what is this? And I tried the control T hotkey and that's not it. I was like, oh God, well, well, how do I, all I need to do is just like move this around and shrink it a little bit. Like, how do I do? So if you need that type of functionality, Art Rage might not be the best for you. But if you want to say, okay, I have a canvas. My canvas doesn't move. It's locked on here just like it's on an easel. I have my brushes, I'm going to load paint onto those brushes and then put them on that canvas, you're golden. I can't think of anything better. Um, like I think Rebel 4 is very close, um, but if you if you like the idea of Art Rage but you want infinite customization, I would say Rebel 4 might be a better fit for you. Because Rebel 4 is super, super, super deep. But it, in my opinion, it almost has too many options. Um, and then Art Rage has just enough options. If all I need is to paint, Art Rage has the perfect amount of options because I'm not worried about tools. I'm not worried about well, click what button and where does that go and what's my hotkey for that? No, it has the cool radial menu on the side. It has a really unique uh, color palette uh, down at the bottom right where you can even import images. So I actually made a custom image of a Zorn palette. I didn't use it here, but um, that way I can just load that up and then just pick directly from that. So very cool functionality. Um, it takes a little bit to get used to. I actually have not used the portable versions. Um, I think there's a new one called Art Rage Vatai. Um, and by the way, I do apologize if I've said Art Station. A lot because my portfolio and all of my art stuff is on ArtStation. So having ArtStation and Art Rage, and I actually have ArtStation open right now. Um, 
<laughs> so I do apologize if I mess those up. But just know I'm talking about Art Rage. The program is Art Rage. So uh, <laughs> now I have to go back and listen to see if I did any of that. Um, but I, I cannot stress how much I love the palette knife. And I think what I love so much about the palette knife and using it is it's a perfect finishing touch. Like you can do a full painting with the palette knives. You totally could. You could put the loading up. Um, you could put, you know, the, the drop off and the fallout, the stretch and all that stuff. And you can customize that. But what I really like doing is using the thick paint brushes of oil paint with a heavy impasto and nice kind of teeth on them to block in my shapes. And then once I start getting into the detail, um, then I do kind of a palette knife pass and just scrape some edges. You know, and there's there's kind of the flat edge, like you use the actual flat part of the scalpel or something and like scraped it. But then there's another one called a frost. And um, what that does is that almost like dissipates the paint. It's almost like in, instead of using the, the edge of the palette knife, you're smushing the paint down with it. It, it just kind of blends it, it splatters it all out a little bit. So it's a great way to get soft edges. Um, so really that's how I think of it. The hard edge, um, if I need a hard edge, I will use the edge of the palette knife. I will use the sharp flat, and then I'll do just kind of a quick glance. And then on the flip side, if I need some like a lost edge or like a shadow is going into a darkness or something like that, or, or like two uh, values are right next to each other, but the hues are different, but I want to blend them together so your eye just kind of blends through all of them. I'll use that frosted uh, palette knife. Just really interesting because it keeps that texture on there. It keeps the tooth of the paint. And yeah, you just can't find that anywhere else. I, I've been talking to a lot of different brush makers and are, you know, myself and um, just trying to make a tool for something like Photoshop or, you know, Affinity Photo or Krita or something that works the same way. But that Art Rage palette knife is off the hook, man. It is so good. Um, but yeah, it's always just so much fun to use Art Rage. It, it allows me to stay creative instead of worrying so much about all of the digital tools and getting in my own head about, well, what if I did this type of color overlay with a color dodge layer and a this with a that and a, then sandwich them together and then smudge this out with a... 1% fill, like, it, it stops becoming digital painting, and you're just painting. You're just thinking like a painter. You're you're grabbing a color, and should that be warmer or cooler? And it should be, should it be lighter or darker? Like, those are the only things going through my mind. And then edges, maybe. And another technique that I've started doing, and I started doing it um, recently, and I really think it's going to be my new way of doing things. And I do it here is since I'm not great at drawing, what I do is I just kind of do the landmarking stuff and then I do the big thick paint and get it in there. But what you'll notice is whenever I start going in for the details, I will pick the pencil again and go in and kind of sketch my details over maybe with a white or a blue or, or something to give me that control and that detail, um, kind of to fine tune stuff. And of course this is going to be near my focal point, but I'm really enjoying, basically I don't sketch at the beginning. I sketch at the end. You know what I mean? Like I, I kind of flip the script a little bit. I do the fun impasto, big impressionistic brush strokes, but then wherever I need to go and really get fine tuned, then I zoom in. You know, it's the whole aspect of working big to small. You always hear it in art school. Work big to small, big to small. But this is my version of that. I, I would just think, in my mind, I'm like, oh, big paintbrush. Okay, big stuff. Oh, then small paintbrush. And then small paint. But that's not necessarily true. Like, you can get a marker. You can get an ink pen. You can get a Sharpie. You can get a pencil. And do the same thing. And that's the lovely thing about working digital. Is you can get the quote unquote pencil brush and have a hundred percent opacity that goes over thick oil paint. You can't really do that in real life, but you can do it digitally and you better believe I'm going to use that to my advantage. 
<laughs> you know, um, and it's great because you can fix proportions. You can do all that stuff later, like later down the line. You can worry about that stuff. Um, and, and I'm just I just seem to have more fun when I'm doing things this way. And honestly, I think I'm getting better results because of it. And I, I'm really happy with this Turian piece. Um, it got a lot of a way bigger response on social media than I thought it would, to be honest with you. Like, I was just like, oh, cool, Mass Effect. Yeah, I need to replay this game, man. I love Mass Effect. Mass Effect 2 is one of my favorite games ever, maybe. Um, but to see kind of, the, you know, people love that series. But then a lot of high-profile artists were saying really good stuff about this one. And I'm like, oh, thanks, guys. Like, I do appreciate that. I used a lot of reference, as you guys saw. But, you know, there's no shame in that. You got, I got to know what a Turian looks like. I gotta know what Garrus looks like, you know what I mean? Like, how am I gonna draw something if I don't know what it looks like? So, having that there, but I, I'm feeling more comfortable in my own skin working in this type of method. Like, very loose, rough, landmark sketch. Block in big, thick brush strokes. Um, start refining some edges here and there. Maybe get some forms in based on our lighting. And then go in with another sketch brush or a hard round or something and really get into the nitty gritty later. Um, it's a lot of fun. But overall, my, my thoughts on Art Rage is if you have the $80 and you're interested in um, getting that traditional feel in your digital art, yes. Without question, yes. Art Rage will surprise you. You will always learn something new loading up that program. Um, I, I think it's been like uh, version 6.1.2 or 6.2.1 or something like that for months, 10, 11 months. But I've never had Art Rage crash, knock on wood. Um, it just works. They don't need to update it. It's great. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like I found my role. I found the way I like to use it. And man, I sometimes I get an itch to just load up Art Rage and mess around with that palette knife. Because, there, like I said, there is nothing like it. There's nothing like it. The way it smudges color is perfect. And oh, it's so good. It's so much fun. It brings that fun back into painting. Instead of doing all this problem solving and designing and stuff, Art Rage is simple enough that you can go in there, start making really dope looking art quickly. And for that, I think it's worth its weight in gold. Um, I think we're going to do a deep dive of Rebel like this as well. Um, I already kind of did one about what my favorite brushes were, but I, I want to maybe talk about the program in general. If there's another program you would like me to cover, I mean, I have, hell, I have nine of them. <laughs> you know, uh, I was thinking Paintstorm Studio, we got Rebel, we got Affinity Photo, Clip Studio Paint. Uh, maybe Clip Studio. We haven't done a lot of Clip Studio love on this channel. Maybe we need to fix that. But um, overall, I love Art Rage. It's very specific. If you're into more of the smooth art and stuff, you can probably get away with it in Art Rage. But that's you're going to fight against the program more than the program is going to help you. You know what I mean? At least in my opinion. Um, yeah, I, I think it's lovely. For how well it uses the, the the kind of the pastel sticks and the but all I really use now is the palette knife, the pencil, and the the oil brush, and that's it. I use three things. They could get rid of everything else in that program, well, except for like layers. But even that, I usually use one layer, full a la prima style, man. Wet on the wet, let's go. Um, <laughs> but yeah, let me know if any other uh, painting software you'd be interested in. I have an iPad. I have Procreate. Um, I need to figure out the best way maybe to get some of that footage on here to be able to narrate over it. But that's a whole different can of worms. <laughs> Once you go portable, it's a, it's a different reality. Um, but yeah, just let me know what you think in the comments. Have you used Art Rage? Do you like it? Um, I've seen both sides. I've seen some people say, oh, Art Rage is still the best physical you know, or digital replication of traditional I've ever used. Some people are like, I tried to use it and it feels gimmicky, like it's some weird MS Paint thing. Um, I'm just interested to hear what you guys think about it. But personally, I love it. I highly recommend it. I think if you're into this type of stuff, it's going to be great for you. But until we speak again, 
you guys take care. Go make some awesome art, and we will see you all next time. Bye.